Have you seen the news that a new study shows replacing salt with a salt substitute reduces the risks of stroke, heart attack, and death? Does this mean that we all need to limit our salt intake in order to improve our health? Maybe not. Let's unpack this a little bit more. I'm Dr. Brett Schur, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and, and salt is a big controversial topic. There's no question that the, I guess you could say the common narrative in our medicine and nutrition culture is we need to reduce our salt intake as a population. But I've got a big problem with that, and we've written a whole evidence-based guide at Diet Doctor pointing out some of the details about maybe why that's not the right approach, especially when you're talking about the whole population of people. But now this new study, some people say may cast um, a little doubt on our doubt, right? It may be more information showing that salt reduction is important. But I think we need to know the details of the study because it's not so clear cut. So this study is titled Effect of Salt Substitution on Cardiovascular Events and Death and is published in New England Journal of Medicine. Now, first and foremost, anytime you're looking at a study, you want to say what kind of study is it? So this is a randomized controlled trial, very high quality study. But then you want to say who was included. And this is a very important point. They had over 20,000 people enrolled in the trial. And they were all in rural China, right? So right away, we're dealing with a specific subset, not an urban population, a rural population, and not a global or a US or a European population, but in China. Why is that important? Well, because the way they live their lives and specifically their baseline diet is going to be very specific for that region. So we have to ask ourselves if that's going to translate to the rest of the world, basically. So we'll get to that, but that's an important point. The next point is they either had a history of a stroke or they were over 60 years old or older and had high blood pressure. So right away, we're not really talking about a low risk population. They either had strokes or they were over 60 and had high blood pressure. So a higher risk population, again, in rural China. And what they did was they took regular salt for half the group and the other half of the group had a salt substitute that was reduced sodium and increased potassium. And that's going to be important because they didn't just reduce the sodium, they increased the potassium, two variables. So when you're talking about trying to find the exact cause of something, you want to have one variable. But this had two variables. It was a specific salt substitute with lower sodium and higher potassium. And they followed the patients for almost five years. And what they found was the stroke rate was lower with the salt substitute than with regular salts, as was the rate of major cardiovascular events and even death. So all of those were lower with the salt substitute. Now, was it a dramatic change that there was, you know, a huge reduction? No, it was a small reduction, but still pretty meaningful reduction with a small intervention, right? It wasn't like they were treating with tons of medications. It wasn't like they were totally revamping their lifestyle. All they did was swap out salt for a salt substitute. Pretty easy intervention. So that's going to help reduce death and cardiovascular events and strokes. Even if it's a small reduction, it seems pretty easy. But how are we going to interpret this? I think that's the important part because some of the conclusions that, we're going to, that we've seen already in the media and likely will continue to see is sodium kills, salt kills. We have to reduce salt. Well, here's one thing that I find really interesting. When you go back to the original DASH trials, and that's where a lot of this um, sodium reduction for reducing blood pressure came about, the studies that have looked at that data showed that those people who were eating a low potassium diet, the salt reduction made a significant difference in their blood pressure. But for people who were eating a higher potassium diet, then sodium reduction did not have much of a difference at all in impacting their blood pressure. And that's what's so important about what they did in this trial because it was a reduced sodium, increased potassium supplement. So was it the potassium that made the benefit or the sodium? You don't really know. All you know is that this one substitute helped. And the other thing, of course, is what was the baseline diet that these people were eating? Now, I combed through this trial looking for some data on their baseline diet through the regular paper and even in the supplementary material, and there was nothing there. So we, we have to guess at what they were eating, at what someone in a rural Chinese village would be eating, probably lots of rice. Um, and But I don't know. You know, I don't know what else, right? I, I, I wish I knew. I'd have to contact somebody who lives in those villages and, and get samples of what they were eating. But the point being is, is how do we know if this applies to you and your diet? And that I think that's a crucial point because especially if we're eating 
a healthy, uh, low carb, either, you know, liberal low carb, moderate low carb, or strict low carb, any version of low carb diet that is full of whole foods, you're not getting any sodium or any salt in the foods that you're eating. You're adding it to your foods. That's a very different scenario than someone who's eating processed foods, foods that come in packages that are already full of salt. You know, those are completely different scenarios. Also, does the carb content matter? Does hyperinsulinemia matter? Um, does overall metabolic health matter? You know, none of that was really looked at in this study, but I guess the point is that we just need more information. But really, um, I think the, the main take home message for me is we have to be careful how we interpret this. It doesn't mean sodium restriction for everybody is going to be beneficial. And I really suggest you check out our, our full evidence-based guide on salt intake. So, cause we really unpack lots of different details and lots of different scenarios about where you may or may not be concerned about salt. Um, and I think this is one more piece of evidence that we have to um, interpret with caution that we're going to include into that guide. Um, that really the question is, what does it mean for you? And if you are not 60 years old or having a prior stroke and have hypertension and living in rural China, I'm not sure if this study applies to you or not. So be careful how we interpret the headlines. All right. Um, if you thought this was helpful, please give us a thumbs up and click subscribe. That way you get all the updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody, and have a great day.